Hello. 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 This is. I'm here. I'm here too. Hey guys. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> Where is our well, welcome to Women on Words. <laughs> Today is our first show back for the year. I think the show started already. So, yeah, and I, I I have so much to talk about with this book. Yes, it is book chat Sunday. Um, welcome to Women on Words. I guess with uh. Michelle Ingrid and author Elrin and Sierra will be joining us soon. We are here to discuss today Twins by Tia Rain. Michelle, did you enjoy the book? Oh, this book was a wild ride. (laughs) You know, I wasn't sure what to expect because it's a little bit different than the last book. And I wasn't sure what to expect because the same thing happened where we were dropped in the middle of the action, but I, I, it did not, it did not prepare me for the ride that was. (laughs) (laughs) The surprise was amazing. I had such fun listening to it. Well, I'm sorry, reading it. I'm just listening to it, reading it. So, yeah. um, I you want to read the back out, cover? Right. That's what I was going to say. We can start out with the blurb. And this is Twins by Tia Rain. Uh, Lucian Gamble. I want out. Plain and simple. This life isn't the same anymore, especially now that Angel is gone. However, leaving isn't an option. Even if the church won't let me go, I'd still have my brother. Seth is a virus. One that it particular, I'm sorry, one that I take partial credit for creating. I had resigned to my burden of watching over him until I found her again. Malia Parks, I'm done with relationships. I gave up on them the day my divorce was final. My new goals consist of taking care of my daughter, keeping my grams off my back, and running my business. Then he appears, bringing along a ghost from my past. Lucian is everything a girl could ask for, but Seth is everything I didn't know I needed. Seth grumbled, I want it all. My brother thinks I don't know what he's trying to do. I know everything. I also know he isn't man enough to do it. He wants a happy family, but he can't protect them, not like I can especially now that she's in danger. He needs me, and I need her. I can't have her. I'll prove them wrong. So, hey, that... ladies. Hey, Sierra. <laughs> <Hey. laughs> we thought you dipped us there for a minute. No, I actually started the show, and I can't. I don't know why it's, it's not coming through, and y'all can't hear me, but I'm calling in on my phone. It's good to be here. Um, happy January. Happy January. <laughs> okay, so obviously y'all can see that the 2020 gremlins have carried on into 2021, but it's all good. <laughs> Is that what we're calling them, the 2020 gremlins? I am, girl, because this is supposed to be like a PG-13 show. I'm thinking other things right now, but I'm just not going to say them. <laughs> <laughs> But it it is good to hear you all's um, voices. I've talked to you all individually as the weeks have gone by since our last show. But it's good to be back on the air together. So it's all good. (laughs) Okay. Yeah. Let's dive into Tia Rain's twins. Okay. So I'm just going to say let's talk about our overall impression. Let's start with you, Lisa, before we go into the specifics. Overall impression of this story. I absolutely love this book. Absolutely. Uh-huh. Um, I love talk way more than I did this one, but I enjoyed uh-huh. Twins. Just as, you know, it wasn't. It was so different from Hawk, but it was still in the same vein. You know, you got to see Church. You got to see Hawk again a little bit. 
and of course, I love my mini. I I can't wait to yes. see his own book. <laughs> Boy, oh boy, oh boy. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. So, Michelle Ingrid, what's your thoughts on Tia Rain's twin? Okay. So, I was just saying to Lisa that I walked into this book not sure what to expect. And uh-huh. it's very different from the first book. I mean, the opening yeah. is like, I won't lie, the opening leaves you with your mouth hanging out on the floor, and you're like, what? Like, I had to yeah. redirect my thoughts because I was like, okay, this is, some, this is definitely some 2021 stuff because I was not <laughs> expecting the scene that happened at the beginning or the, the time period with which it happened. I'll say that, the time period. So um, this book is totally different. It's a completely different ride than yes. um, the past book, and, but it still delivers on the surprises. Yes. Still yes. Surprise. Yeah. Still surprise. Yeah. 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 Now, um, you all know this. This book took me by surprise, actually, from the beginning. So, um, for our audience, the opening scene starts with two little boys in a school. Oh, how <laughs> innocent, unsuspecting. But no, all right. these two little <laughs> boys have just slit throat of the school principal. I'll just start that way. And it just Mm -hmm. so happens one overhears some kids being cruel outside the window, like bullying another kid, and it draws his attention. And he looks down, and he sees our heroine. He sees Malia, and um, he's immediately smitten with her. And the brother takes a look and sees her too. And in this moment, these two twins, who are constantly warring with one another, they agree on something, and that's that they love this little girl. Like they're um, immediately intrigued by her. So I will say that the the beginning took me by storm. I was like, "Uh uh-oh, what's happening here? (laughs) (laughs) Um, So to see two little kids who are deadly at nine is actually pretty scary to me. But I enjoyed the skill in which the author um, introduced these two characters, these three characters to us. It was very intriguing to see these little boys who are trained assassins, but at the same time, they're very much kids, and they interact like kids, you know, like just curious, easily distracted, um, you know, seeing something you want and touching it like you see um, Seth touching Malia's hair in that opening scene. Mm -hmm. And so that part of it, you know, kind of starts to endear you to the twins almost immediately. Um, But in in the second scene, we start jumping forward. I want to say 20-something years uh, we're jumping forward. Like 24 years we jump forward. And we start to meet our heroine. And we meet her once again at a school. So what do you think about um, what was your initial reaction <laughs> when you meet Malia, who's now a single parent with a little girl, her daughter, Emery, being bullied at school, and how Emery handled this and the response? Go ahead, Lisa. Okay. So <laughs> Emery is my girl. I'll tell you this. Okay. <laughs> I love this little girl. And just so the audience knows, Emery does not talk. She mm-hmm. no. There's nothing wrong as far as physically to prevent her from speaking, but she does not speak. So um, that is why she is bullied in school. The kids call her names and, you know, they're all nasty to her. Well, she had had enough, and her grandma told her to mess them up. I won't say the words that grandma used, but... Uh, <laughs> She told her, you know, if they hit you, you hit them back. She beat this little boy so bad, he broke his jaw and his nose. <laughs> I was like, oh, yeah. my God, I love this little girl. But <laughs> to yeah. my point, the little boy was a little psychopath. He pulled down her skirt, threw her down on the ground, and sat on her chest. So, yeah, he was a little, you know, race um, rapist in the making. So, yeah, 
I don't blame her. I would have broke his jaw too. Okay. I I love him really. <laughs> Okay, Michelle, and I, how did I love you how that? Malia defended mm-hmm. Emery to the to the principal and to the parents of the child. Okay, okay, Michelle. So let me get this straight. So this story started with um, a pair of nine year old killers, mm-hmm. <laughs> and then we open up the very first scene of modern day and a little girl. I think I called you and I said, I can see an assassin already. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I I you did. He, he that little boy and come out. I was like, I'm not okay. And I'm like, who did she adopt? I'm scared. I, I said, well, I think the words I used were, I guess we can just be glad that this little girl's on her side. Because <laughs> when she, um, <laughs> Who's the yeah. hit like a grown man? <laughs> <laughs> the ex-husband. <laughs> yes. He said that that little girl hit like a grown man. Yes, yes. yes. That, was, I, I, that was something. <laughs> yeah, I must say, when, when we jumped from the two little nine-year-olds who um, handled the principal, and then I meet um, Emery, I was like, okay. Okay, this church is different from Hawk's book, definitely in book one, because we read that earlier in 2020. But I I totally understood the defense of um, Malia, of her daughter, you know, yes. being a parent and having to go to school, you know, to protect my own daughter. My daughter is relatively small, and in high school, she was really little. You know, she was that that 86-pound kid as a teenager that people like to push around and bully. And I remember going to school, being ready to jack some woman's kid up and say, keep your hands off my kid before, you know, I do you and your little one some bodily harm. So I, I immediately connected with that energy that Malia poured into this scene. I really did. Mm. Even more mm. so mm. that her daughter not being able to speak, um, and you know, like, I, like I can imagine this young this kid sitting on her chest and her not even being able to call for help, you know, and yeah. so yeah, that that really grabbed me. Like the author took a risk with that, you know, to me in a romance because that particular scene can put you in a headspace that you you don't necessarily want to be in, you know. So, um, so I totally got that. But at the same time, I had a thought. I was like, "Is Seth this little girl's daddy? Cause she's pretty crazy." Like oh I was really God. wondering. I was thinking the same thing. <laughs> same, same, same. I was like, "This child has got to be related to him." Yeah, I, think no. I, yeah. I kept sending Sierra crazy texts like, girl, <laughs> when when this little girl fell for Seth, I was like, killers, no killers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's true. So, now, now, they yeah. did recognize something off in each other. They did recognize that. I'll give you that. Yeah, yeah, they did. Um, I think the other thing that I thought was interesting um, is that later in that scene, you meet Malia's grandmother. Yes, uh, I and, love Graham. Yes, mm-hmm. and, and Granny is usually or the voice of reason. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> this, Mrs. Sylvia Brooks is a little bit different. She is like uh, a AK, AKA Granny, AKA Little Escobar, AKA Little <laughs> AKA. I mean. <laughs> Granny pretty pretty rough around the edges, and Granny cusses like a sailor. <laughs> and I thought it was interesting her response, you know, 